in order to live as royalty, um, in order to live uh, as kings and queens and princes and princess, we have to um, develop the mind of a king or a queen or a prince or a princess, or we have to develop the mind of royalty. Um, and in order to develop the mind of royalty, we have to get rid of the mind of slavery. You, we, this, it is imperative that we stop thinking and behaving as slaves after slavery is over. Once we have been delivered from captivity, then we we must go back to living as royalty. Now, I understand that we are in the land of our captors and we have not went back home. But I found out something in the scriptures and I've been sharing with you about um, our covenant. Our covenant. And when we look at the situation of our people scattered to the four corners of the earth, um, we see that uh, we are beginning to wake up to truth. And I mentioned this on the on the last video about the the mindset of the slave versus the mind and we um, the mindset of a free person. And I could even take it a step farther, which is not only a free person, but the mindset of royalty. The mindset of royalty is almost completely opposite from that of a slave. So um, I also mentioned that post-slavery and one of the dangers uh, that we experienced while we were in slavery one of the things that affected us the most was what they did to us mentally. And I'm not going to go over that whole video again. But if you see yourself in a particular way and, and you can't see yourself in any other way, you're going to keep behaving like that. And so, um, biblically speaking, we have been in captivity, according to the Bible. We were here 400 years. We've already mentioned that that 400 years is, is up and now the awakening of the people is taking place. And I, I uh, left off on the last video and I mentioned the fact that uh, in order for us to begin to walk in truth, we have to return to the covenant. Now I'm speaking to all of Israel now and the companions the only hope and the only answer for us as a nation of people is returning to the covenant because there are things in the covenant that you are in with Abaya. There are things in that covenant that you don't know. Um, there are things in that covenant that you should know, but they, the world and the slavers, especially the Europeans who, who for sure know who you are, um, they will not ever even begin to think about teaching you that you are the covenant people. Now, in this video, I want to focus on that idea or the, that truth of the covenant people, the covenant people. And I left you last video talking about why is it important that you recognize the covenant. And I said, because the people of the covenant rule the world. 
And I know it was a knee-jerk reaction <laughs> all over the I know <laughs> all over the earth there was knee-jerk reactions. All over the earth, I know there were conversations. There was, man, I don't believe what he's talking about, and on and on and on. And there he go, just talking, okay? And I mentioned that I was going to begin to prove it in our following follow-up videos. And so I want to begin by saying it one more time. What is so important about our covenant? What's important about our covenant is what's in the covenant. See, you are not, you're, you're not just in a normal covenant. The covenant that we were put into by our ancestors with Yah, who chose us to be a part of the covenant. That covenant has in it the rulership of the world. That the, the ownership of earth is in that covenant. The, the being above and never beneath is in our covenant. Being the royalty, the royal priesthood and the royal people is in our covenant. And receiving the, and I'll use this word because I know most of you don't understand it, but I'm using it anyway. Receiving the blessings of the covenant is for you. And for me, it's for all of Israel and Israel's companions. So uh, when, you, when we don't know that, we keep asking questions and we keep running around in circles. We keep trying to figure out what is wrong with us. We got, we, we, we're out of slavery. Yes. But we still act like slaves because we don't know the covenant. We're out of slavery and it looked like instead of getting better as a nation, we're getting worse. Because we're in a covenant. I mean, I mean, what happened to us? We used to own land and now we hardly don't own no land anymore. We don't have our because you're in a covenant. I mean, look at, I mean, I hear people say this all the time. Man, we had school, we had hospital, we had, we had our own uh, worship places. We had this, we had our own universities. We had this and that. We had, they keep talking about Black Wall Street, which I don't like that term black. But anyway, we had our own Wall Street and all that. What happened to us? I have the answer, Zion. And the answer is, we are forsaking the covenant as a nation. We're not keeping the covenant. And there's reasons for that. One, because nobody ever told you you were in a covenant. They told you that you was black. They told you you was a Negro. They told you you were a slave. They told you that you were a Gentile. They told you that you should be happy that they captured you and enslaved you because that's how you met white Jesus. They told you about pie in the sky. They told you about a whole lot of lies. They told you that don't worry about that Old Testament, the covenant. All you got to do is blood of white European Caesar Bourget images on your life, and you're going to be fine. You stay right where you are, and blah, 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 blah. And when you, when you use religion in that way, and you use so much so that our people, even right now, with all this truth, that is going forth. I mean, you cannot even type into your search engine the word Hebrew without our faces showing up. You cannot type the word Israelite without our faces showing up. You can't type the word Yehudim without our faces showing up. You cannot type the word um, um, the transatlantic slave trade and then uh, work that with the, with the biblical, you know, like with the Bible and say the 400 year captivity with our, our faces and our names showing up. Why? Because we're those people. We're the covenant people. The evidence is everywhere. And um, something happened, which is what I was going to share with you. When we went into rebellion, 
one of the curses that came up on us is that we would not know that we were the covenant people. So I said this last on the last video, I mentioned the fact that realizing that we're Israel is important. Oh my. <laughs> but what is so important about being Israel? Did you hear what I said? I'll say it again. Realizing that we are Israel is very, very, very important. But what about realizing that we're Israel is so important? And the answer is that Israel is in a covenant with Yah. And Israel is chosen by Yah. To be in the covenant. And what makes our covenant so powerful. Is that in the actual covenant. There is the promise. Of owning and ruling the world. I really want that to sink in. Think. I want you to think about this. Yah. Is by the way. Told I would buy for this shirt. <laughs> Yah created the heaven and the earth. And then he placed, obviously, Adam in it. And after the fall of Adam and Shua, Yah then chose another people. And when he chose this, the other people, which we'll get to that later, he went into a covenant with them. And while you may hear of the things in the covenant that are considered to be like curses, that's why they tell you, you know, you don't want to look at the covenant because they're not covenant full of curses. Yeah, but, but there's another side of that covenant they're not telling you. And that is that the covenant is also full of blessings. The covenant also contains in it the riches and the wealth of the world. It also contains in it the leadership of the world. It also contains in it the education of the of the entire world, and also it uh, the covenant contains in it the light of the world. Because in our covenant, we are told that the world is in darkness, and Abba Yah has given the covenant people the light. Um, we are also we also find out that we are the salt of the earth which means the world is completely tasteless and bland um, without us. And so we make up the salt of the earth and therefore uh, the covenant people are the ones who rule the world. They rule the earth. They actually are the possessors of it. Now that's not to say that other people can't live here. It just means that you own it. Already, there you go. All right, I'm getting ready to show, show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. The, the covenant has in it rulership now when you think today of who rules the world who runs the world like where is the center of the uh, the power everybody's mind immediately goes to Europe that's just where it is it, it really is not America they, they'll say America which is, by the way, the, the, the land and the people are two different things. The land is American land. It's, it's Amur. It's just like when they're, uh, but the people are European. The people who conquered the land are European. But the, the original, like myself, I'm an Amurican because I'm a part. My, my ancestors grew up here. This is our land. All what you see behind me is this, my land. This is my people's land. 
So we got conquered. We got conquered by the European. So the European is the conqueror of the, the, the land masses that we call the Americas, all right? So we have the English, the Spanish, and the French primarily. Um, they conquered here. So when we talk about Europe and the European, we're obviously talking about those who conquered this land and who took it. And we say they rule the world. So Europe and the Americas are now ran by the Europeans. And so therefore, um, we say they rule the world. But did you know that the average European believes in their heart that they have a right to the world. Did you know that? They, they don't just believe that they were supposed to conquer the world, but the, most of them believe that they have the right to it. In other words, they feel like they have the birthright to it. And the reason they feel like that is because they have been taught that the throne, please hear me, that the throne in England, where they are getting ready to sit this old man on in a few days, they believe that when he sits on that particular throne, he sits on the throne of David. They believe he's sitting on the literal throne of David. That he is a bloodline descendant. And that is where he believes they get their power from. Or I should say they get the right to rule the world. Why? Because they believe they can trace their bloodline back to King David. They believe in that throne that, that they're sitting on. They believe that they got the stone of Israel. Jacob's literal stone where he laid his head. They believe they have a stone of Israel. The man Israel. In their possession, as well as all of the artifacts, and we're not going to get into that. So therefore, they are very particular about preserving that monarchy. And they are also very particular about preserving that bloodline. And we won't get into that whole, you know, woo we. We already know that they got some weird stuff going on inside that that thing, but it is their it is their belief in the fact that they believe. I don't know how they believe that coming out of Jafar, but they kind of believe do believe that they are the heirs. It's it's really called replacement theology. We won't get into that today, but they really believe they've replaced real Israel. So they believe that they have become like spiritual Israel some kind of way. And spiritual Israel has like replaced the actual true Israelites. And they, um, and of course, we know that that's a lie. Even even um, my cousin Shaul wrote about that. He said, ain't no way in the world y'all going to be done with Israel. So, so Israel, <clears throat> the, the, the crown in England and the throne there. They believe they have a right to rule and own the world. You know, people say, who they think they are, blah, blah, blah. They really believe they are Israel. And therefore, because they believe that they are the descendants of Israel and that that, that throne is the throne of David, then they don't feel anything about conquering the rest of the world and bringing everybody under subjection of them. But the truth is, they're not Israel. We're Israel. So that throne and that power and that principality and, and, that, and the government and the authority and the teaching and the lead, all the thing that is coming up out of Europe that's affecting the whole world is not supposed to be coming from them. What's coming, the, the leaders of the world is supposed to be us, the covenant people. The rulers of the world are supposed to be us, the covenant people. The teachers of the of the world are supposed to be us, those of us who understand Torah. 
the wealth of the world was to be delivered into the hands of the Israelites. After, after captivity, we would come out with great spoil. And uh, I see my time. I didn't want to make these videos too long, but I wanted to at least put that one out to let you know that when you think about the powers that be that are running the world, I want you to know that that power is a usurped power and a stolen power. It is a really a fake and a false power that is being led by our enemy, Hasatan. While the true power and the true authority and the true rulership of the world belongs to Israel. And I'm going to show it in the next video. But I just want you to see why this world power today believes they have a right to do what they do and teach what they teach and spread what they spread. It's because they are convinced that they're connected to the very throne of David. It's the throne of David as an Israelite that gives them the authority, but they are not connected. We are the true children of Yah. We are the descendants of the house of David. So therefore, we are the royalty. And it's evident. And Yah about to turn this thing. So therefore, we need to get into this. We need to go back and understand really what's in this covenant. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to start. I'm going to talk about how we can start uh, making steps as a nation um, toward back toward the covenant, which will then again establish our uh, true place and position on this planet. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. One love, Zion. Um, if these videos are making you think, if they are uh, causing you to want to study and research, and they're helping you, giving you encouragement, um, support the work of the ark so we can continue to do this full time. Um, and I pray that Abaya is gracious towards you and multiply that which you give here back to you some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But please just understand this video is that Yah's chosen people are the people that he has chosen to rule the world. Shalom.